flowed along virtually the whole length of this runway. That is simply beautiful. Using all three axes of the controls of the aircraft, blending them seamlessly all the way along a two mile stretch in front of you. And all this is an aircraft that made its main flight as the Saab 105 in 1963, developed to replace the Swedish Air Force's de Havilland Vampire jet trainers. It entered service in 1967, being used apart from the training for light attack, photographic reconnaissance, and for VIP transport purposes. It is impossible to fit the SK 60 with two extra seats, creating a four seater for staff transport, and they still use it to some extent in that role today. plans to develop this aircraft into a five-seat business jet, but that plan didn't gain any support from the market, and sadly was not pursued any further. There was only one export customer for the Saab 105, that was the Austrian Air Force, whose plane is how quiet it is compared with the Saab 105s and SK-60s we've seen before.
a long discussion over a replacement has been concluded and the Grob G120TD turboprop, also in use for the RAF as the prefect, has been selected. The Swedish Air Force is calling it the SK40 and first deliveries took place this April. So this is very likely to be the last time we'll see the SK60 in active service at the Air Tattoo. However, I'm told all three of the aircraft are here at the Air Tattoo this weekend are going to be handed over to the Swedish Air Force historic flight, which already has one. So, who knows, we may see them back in the UK in the future. But I think that is one of the most elegant aerial ballets I've seen from a jet aircraft for a very long while. It came courtesy from courtesy of Captain Nils Schildstrom, Corsair Princess of the Swedish Air Force with the Saab SK-60.